All right. Hi, everybody. Misty Bunch here with Death of the Desk. This is my good friend, Alex. Hello, everybody. So, Alex, one reason I just was dying to interview you, interview you for this community is because this vlog is for people that have to sit all day or they're idle at an assembly line or nurses or just someone who maybe doesn't have a lot of time, but they have a lot of body aches and stiffness. And I know that you have a lot of experience with working with all kinds of people. So I just wanted them to have this opportunity to hear what you have to say and what your advice would be for this community. So can you just like tell us, tell us the quick gist of who you are. They can look up the big details later. The story is substantial and it could go on for quite, quite a long time. So I'll do the, the uh, Cliff Notes version. Uh, always been active, always loved to move. So I, I know what, how important it is to move and how much I need and how much better I feel when I do it. Uh, so when I got into fitness, I got into just because I was always at the gym, to be honest. And my trainer at the time was like, you should just work at the gym. You're always here. And uh, what turned into, what started as a hobby turned into my, my, what was my lifestyle, but also then into a career. Started competing in fitness, which then sort of opened this whole new world of movement, but also diet, exercise, lifestyle changes, things like that. And then I got really heavy on the nutrition side as well. Sort of steered more people away actually from the aggressive movements because I realized that most people were overdoing it in the gym. They weren't doing the right things that their bodies weren't prepared to do. They were hurting themselves, things like that. So when I would focus on the food with them, I would also then suggest lighter movements, more sensible movements, things more of like prep work for their body. Because most of the people that I was working with were sedentary. They were business professionals. They didn't have a lot of time. They had a lot of issues, which I'm sure you see. And I didn't want to just throw them into the gym. You know, and that was the same when I was personal training too, which I don't do as much of now because I just encourage people to take on small movements or I honestly refer them to your page. And I'm like, just go do some free stuff. <laughs> Thank because you. it's generally the basics that we need and uh you know being an athlete as well knowing how important all of like the baseline work is the te you know it can te it's tedious sometimes <laughs> and it doesn't feel like you're doing a lot especially if you come from like an athletic background where you're like nose to the grind you know no pain no gain i realized that actually it, it was causing more pain than it was anything else and there were a lot of things I was sort of ignoring problems that just became worse problems. And uh, I, I got tired of dealing with those problems. So for myself personally, I'm for more focused on just moving well because I want to be able to move for as long as possible. I still do some gymnastics, which I love and it's fun. Am I back? Yes, there you are. Hi. Okay, yes. Sorry, I, got, I got a call on my iPad. <laughs> it's, busy. it's very busy, yes. Um, but, and I, I totally lost where I, my train of thought when that call came through, but I think I was talking about. You, well, you were talking about personally how the small movement, you were actually getting worse doing the bigger stuff. You still do gymnastics. And how, as I get older, I just want to continue to move well, do, and feel good doing normal things. I always use the reference of, you know, I like to climb on the counters to reach things that are high up. I'm sure you do too, because we're both small. And uh, not have to get the chair every time or rely on somebody else. So I just want to like be spider monkey and climb up on the counter and be able to get things down. And you can't do that if your body's not ready to do that or if you don't have a good range of motion flexibility, uh, strength within range of motion. So for me, those are more things I've been focusing on the past couple of years. And then in seeing how great I feel and better I move when I do bigger movements, I'm finding myself you know, 
suggesting more things like that to clients in combination with their them eating well because then they just feel good it's not hard you know it's not intimidating by any means so less is more yeah well what's fascinating about me doing these interviews with fitness professionals health professionals doctors chiropractors everyone says less is more right so it's this common thread and you know this video really is for the everyday athlete not our elite athletes getting paid to perform you know most of the population is sitting all day we're doing an interview and i have to be on the computer it's inevitable but what can we do to combat that is kind of what I would like to contribute to this demographic. Just the everyday person, like you said, climb on the counter. I mean, how amazing, right? You'd have to be really agile and have good balance and have mobile joints. So in your case, you know, like how many people do you think you've worked with that fall into that category of they're not elite athletes and they probably just need to do small, tiny movements. And, you know, what's been your experience with that demographic and what have what are some you know one or two tips that you've given them in the past well I wish you know honestly I wish I had had as much information and insight around this specifically like five years ago because oh now you're getting it. Is that me? <laughs> I don't. Well, at least it just wasn't me. <laughs> Did I go away? No, you didn't. You were still there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi. That is so embarrassing. I thought I put my phone on airplane mode. Okay. <laughs> we're so even. Exactly. <laughs> this is real life, folks. It is. I'm busy people. <laughs> my face is red. Oh. I know, right? You're totally fine. You're glowing a little bit. It's good. So like I was saying, it, I wish I had had this much experience and insight around movement like five years ago when I was working with more in-person clients because I probably would have prescribed very different things for them. Mm -hmm. I, knowing what, where they came from, what their background was, because honestly, 90% of the people that I work with have no experience with movement beyond, you know, <laughs> the everyday movement. So most of them, and granted, I had a good background in exercise science and, and, and enough information there to work them up progressively. But I still looking back at certain clients that I had and thinking, ah, oh, I should have had them, if I had known about this move or this technique or this approach, they would have benefited so much more than what I gave them. And they still obviously made progress. I'm hoping they did. But. Of course. <laughs> But you know how much better that could have been, how much more comfortable they could have been, uh, more information that I could have provided and value that I could have provided to them having known that. So now I would say that the assessment process is much more rigorous. I don't put people through like the standard personal training, squat assessment, things like that. Like there's the, the assessment part is much more in depth in terms of joint mobility, range of motion, strength within range, all of that. And I think having that basic assessment will then give me enough information a, to be able to communicate with the client around, well, what's appropriate for them. And it's kind of fun when you notice things, which I'm sure you do all the time when you're like, does your hip hurt when you do this? And they're like, it does actually. And you can kind of put those pieces together and you're like, oh, well, it's because of this part and this isn't moving well. And you see how that doesn't like bend the way that it should and that's why this is bothering you and that's fun and kind of watching those little light bulbs go off because then they get excited like oh i only have to do this thing and it's it might get better rather than oh my god i have to do all of these like <laughs> these exercises and the workout and i have to go to the gym and do this thing and i'm like well it's really not that it doesn't have to be that hard and my goal, both on the food side of things, especially, but also on the exercise side of things is keep it so stupid simple that it's easy to integrate into their life. And as soon as you get them to feel a little bit better, they want to do more. They're mm -hmm. excited. So this is perfect. So let's say all the people sitting at a desk right now are listening to you. 
What is an example of something like that? Like, I don't know what Alex is talking about. What's a small, easy to implement movement? Because I feel like I have to do yoga for an hour to get better. Like, what does that mean? Okay, well, it could be something as simple. Well, here's a good example. I don't sit at my desk. Like, I'm at my desk right now. You can't see it because you're on it. Uh, but I'm standing, and I love my stand up desk. I've had it for years now. And sitting for me has always sort of drive me driven me crazy but also too when I was personal training I never sat down so when I started doing more online work and making that adjustment to sitting my body hurt a lot mm -hmm. it was like grumpy my hips were like tired I was rounding in my shoulders like everything kind of just started to fall apart and I would just do little things like neck movements I would at the time, they wouldn't, they didn't have those nice little programs on your computer that would interrupt you uh, in your workflow. We didn't have that back then. Uh, <laughs> right. So I would just set a timer and I would say, okay, every hour or so, I'm just going to like get up and walk around, move a little bit. And I would either do some neck movements. I would do like a very brief sun salutation. I mean, very, very simple, nothing aggressive. And then now as I'm standing more, I do find that like, if I start shifting in my hips, which is my tendency, this part's actually not as much of an issue because I've set everything up, you know, very ergonomically. So my neck doesn't get tired and I'm not like doing anything like that. But my legs, I find, start to get a little tired. My hips, I'll rock in them a little bit more. So it might be a matter of going on a little walk, which feels really good. And then doing a few little stretches on the ground, like the hip swivel. Mm. Love the hip swivel. I don't know what you call it, but you sit on your butt and your knees drop to either side. Um, yeah, I think I call them leg drops or seated hip pendulums. Yeah. Um, I mean, who cares? Right. But I that move, you that's love. like a go-to. Oh. It's, I mean, honestly, I can get down on the floor right here and do it and just do a few rounds of that. Usually, you know, a couple things will pop and crack. But then once I've done that and I've gone on a little walk, I'll come back and I find that I don't shift as much in my hips. Okay. I don't like feel stronger. It's just it, my awareness of my legs aren't, isn't there anymore in terms of it being annoying. Yeah. So this is what I'm hearing so far. Two really cool things you said. You said a timer because we can't think of this ourselves. You get too wrapped up in your emails, right? And then the second thing is, you just did a walk, you stopped for like a minute or two, dropped your knees right and left on the floor, and then you got back to work. Yep. So those are some things that you do. You're a health and fitness and nutrition professional, and that's something that you implement, something that I implement, so it could be really beneficial for this population I'm trying to make a difference for. Absolutely. Oh, now, one other thing, doing? just because I was about to grab my water is – Drinking my water, I mean, it's twofold for this one, but A, it's making sure that I'm drinking enough water throughout the day, but it also makes me leave my desk because I have to pee all the time. Ooh, good point. My bathroom's kind of on the other side of the house because I work from home, so I have to go, and yeah, it can get a little annoying because I'm like, I have to go again, but I'm moving all the time, and I'm not, if I'm drinking enough water, I'm not going very long without having to go on a little walk. I love that. No it's one has said that yet. Water. Mm -hmm. No one has said that yet. This is why I love the interviews because that, that could be someone's lifesaver right there. Drink a ton of water so you have to pee a lot and then you don't have to set a timer. Well, Get a what's break. funny is I had a client for a long time. He was a lawyer. He was very, his profession was very stressful. And when I first got his food logs, he would get like 10 Diet Cokes in a day. And I'm like, what's up? What's up with the Diet Coke? And it turns out after a little investigation that the reason he would go get so many is because he, want, he needed a break from his work. And he, he thought that that was a great excuse was to walk to the soda machine and get a soda. And I was like, well, what is, so then you don't really need the soda. It's not about the soda. We just need to give you something else to drink so you can get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> Wow. So he was subconsciously interrupting his yep. behavior to get steps in. 
Yeah, because that for him, and we found out again through more investigation, that movement for him was meditative. It was a stress relief. Mm. He would go on these intense long bike rides every once in a while and feel amazing. I'm like, well, you need to move. And you're stressed out. <laughs> How weird. <laughs> movement makes you feel amazing. <laughs> it's a free drug. Pretty right. Much. Yep. So oh, I'm getting so excited because with your with your nutrition background, here's what I would love for these people to hear, for everyone to hear is, you know, this is your profession. I don't even know nutrition. I'm gonna be calling you about that. <laughs> is if you like what is your number one piece of advice for the everyday athlete to do in regards to their nutrition? Like what would you this is like the whole world's listening. And that's, that's really hard. <laughs> they would make the biggest difference with the least amount of effort with the thousands of people you've worked with and continue to work with. Right. Wow. That's a really tough one. You could do two. If you, okay, if I was going to say, can I break it up? Into yeah. Two? <laughs> um, I will say macronutrient timing. Okay. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means, yeah. so we know about macronutrients. So we have like fats, proteins, carbs. Macros. Okay. Fats, okay. proteins, carbs. Okay. They're all, they're all important and relevant, but at different times okay. of the day. So some nutrients, macronutrients, can be uh, of more benefit at earlier in the day, while some can be of more benefit later in the day, not only for performance, but for mood, for neurological support and function. Uh, you want to be a little sharper in the morning for while you're at work, but have energy to train later in the day. Don't eat carbohydrates. What are like two, three examples of that? Like I shouldn't eat that. Uh, bread in the morning. Okay. Cereal in the morning. Bagels. Things like that. Okay. So if I just have to have a bagel, when would I eat it? Later after. in the day. Okay. After, yeah. Or after you train. Okay. So after I train. Okay. Okay. And then, okay, I'll let you go. <laughs> and then number two would be increase your quality fats. Because most people aren't eating enough quality fat in their diet because fat is scary for a lot of people. Mm. And we don't need to be afraid of fat. We actually really need it. It's quite essential for us. So I'm at my desk you know, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. What the heck is Alex talking about? I heard this video. I need healthy fat. What am I to do? I work in downtown San Francisco. I always look around and I don't know. What to do. How could I, what kind of example would that be for a busy professional? Uh, an easy example, if you're a coffee drinker, and if you're not, it's not a big deal, but I would say most business professionals are probably coffee drinkers. Uh, I would encourage you to stay away from the sugary coffee drinks, especially that new one that on Starbucks that they just, it's been all over where it's like five Twix bars or something like that. It's like 79 grams of sugar. Insane. I can barely eat that in a meal with like ice cream and cake and things. So stay away from the sugary or sugar loaded coffee drinks and opt for a fattier coffee drink, like heavy cream in your coffee. And luckily a lot of these coffee shops are really catching on to the heavy cream thing. So Starbucks, Pete's, Phil's, which you got, I don't know if you guys have Phil's down there, but a lot of the more chain coffee shops are having or supplying heavy cream, which is great. The only thing is that it's behind the counter. You have to ask for it. They don't put it out with the other ones. But that would be a great start to the day. You're getting a nice fat load. You're going to be a little bit more mentally sharp throughout the day. It will actually also curb a little bit of an appetite too. So you can, you know, don't feel like you need to grab the muffin or the pastry in the case because that will probably actually set you back, not help you in terms of your productiveness at work. Okay. Then lunch or, you know, breakfast or lunch would just be something a little bit, I'll just say fattier, but yes, fattier with a decent amount of protein. That could be a salad with some olive oil or ranch on it and 
you know, protein source of your choosing. I will do uh, bacon and eggs a lot. It's one of my favorite go-tos, but I'm also at home where I can prepare it. Uh, I actually recently had a client who worked at Twitter and I went into Twitter with her and helped her navigate their extensive, amazing cafeteria. And I was like, basically just stay away from this area. And then all of these things are amazing. She's like, oh, I never go over there. Cause she was afraid of all of it, which makes sense. But then I kind of opened up a whole new world of possibility of food choices, which was great. And then it was up to her to kind of test them out and see which one she liked, which ones made her feel good, satiated her, things like that. Um, I do bunless burgers a lot. It's pretty easy. Love a burger, put some bacon on it or some cheese, avocado, things like that. All good fat sources. So pretty easy when you really think about it. And then if there is a salad, I just uh, push, put that bread off to the side or I ask them not to put it on the plate and save it for later. Okay, awesome. So, you know, this is, this is exactly why I'm so excited about this. So if my, you know, death of the desk community is listening to this, they're like, wait, a nutrition professional said I could have a little fat. Is that, that fat if you want. right? Is that kind a of a lot of fat if you want? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of would that is that commonly startling for people to hear you say someone who's like tight and fit and a gymnast for like heavy whipping cream in my coffee? Yep. And bacon. And my eggs are cooked in butter. And if I have carbs, they're always at night, sometimes right before bed. And how do you sleep? <laughs> Amazing. Like a log. <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. So well. Awesome. So your kind of, your tidbits right now are figuring out, like, if you need your carbs, try not to start your day with them. Get some good fast in your diet. And maybe set an alarm or just drink a bunch of water so you force yourself to have to go to the restroom. Exactly. Awesome. Easy place to start. I mean, I think this is super valuable for people to learn. I want them to realize that this is stuff we do, right? They look at our Instagrams and think, oh my God, I can't do what you're doing. But they don't realize I've been doing toe, foot, and ankle, and knee and hip exercises that are so tiny since I was like three. And you're 35 and you're trying to do a pistol. It doesn't really correlate. It starts with, you know, the kill bill. Like, exactly. you pull up and put it down. You know, that we exactly. ride together. Yes. So, um, is there anything else you want to say to, you know, the desk? jockey or someone who stands all day or just doesn't get a chance to move and they're too busy well we're never too busy to be honest we, we prioritize what we want to prioritize and if feeling good not only about yourself but in your body is important to you you'll make the time and if it's not then you won't it's it's pretty much as simple as that uh and and i hope that for most people, they would make it a priority before they have to make it a priority. Because I get a lot of clients that are in those situations, like they've tried, they've, they've just, they're fed up. They're either fed up or they're physically in a position that they need to do it because they're in such bad shape. And once I usually suggest all these little things, like, oh, I could have been doing that the whole time. Like, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Um, but it does take time. And, and I think, there's two things there. One is I don't think enough people, well, especially like in, in the tech world and, you know, with all of the technological advances that have come about over the years, we're very much into those machines and we've kind of forgotten about like the original machine that we all kind of need and have to live in like forever or as long as possible. Uh, and the lack of body awareness that I see in people in the body that they've had for 30, 40, 50 years and the lack of communication that they have with it or understanding of it. That's kind of where the, I feel like the problem starts. It's like, well, you don't even know what's going on because you don't pay attention to your own body. The thing that you're in 24 seven all the time. 
And it's a little bit hard to kind of make that connection at first with like, well, what am I feeling? And, and what is that related to? And does that, is that a good pain or a bad pain? Or is it pain at all? Things like that. And, and once you've integrated like a little movement or a little dietary change, and you can kind of pick up on little feedback that your body's giving you, just start small and you start paying attention to things. And again, you start to get excited. Like, oh, well, that was because of that. And that was because of that. So I would say, be interested in your body because it's kind of important. If anything's important, that's important. <laughs> Take care of that. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be a huge investment of time at all. Again, I, my suggestions and recommendations for people are stupid simple. And if someone comes to me and they're exercising a lot, I'm like, don't exercise for a couple weeks. Go on a walk. They always feel better. And they're like, what? Someone who competes with fitness just told me to go for a walk. Yep, very much. <laughs> That's so. I'm like, you're doing way too much stuff. <laughs> I'm like, aren't you tired? I'm tired of reading it. I don't do that much stuff either. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, like you said, that's a little surprising for someone to hear. Like I eat a substantial amount of food. I eat delicious food all the time. I had cake and ice cream the other day. Uh, and, you know, I lift and do the essential movements that make me feel good that I have fun doing. And also tip, tip, don't do an activity that's not fun. Don't force yourself to go to Soul Cycle if you don't like spinning on a bike. Why would you do that? If you love it, you should do it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have Don't qualifiers. <laughs> I have qualifiers that I suggest clients run through to determine if they should do the exercise on any given day. And that's it. Awesome. You feel good. You're excited to do it. You're enjoying it in the moment and you feel good when you're done and you're happy you did it. If none of those things are there, you have no business doing it. But especially number one, if you're tired, no, you shouldn't push yourself into the class. Go do some basic mobility drills on the floor in the comfort of your own home, maybe with the TV on, yeah. and relax. Okay, so let's, can we maybe go over those slowly again so they can okay. make notes? Yes. What you said, you have, you're, you have to qualify. qualify. Yep, and these are my qualifiers. I do, I run through all of these on any given day myself. That's how I came up with them for other people because they started working really well <laughs> rather than just like being like, no, I can do it. I'll just have some coffee before I go. Yeah. If you need coffee before you go to the gym, maybe you shouldn't go to the gym. So you feel good. You have energy. You got enough sleep the, the, night, before, the night before. You're rested. You're excited to go do said activity. You feel good when you're there doing the activity. You're not hating your life or pushing yourself to an uncomfortable point. And when you're done, you feel really good. That's it. That's it, and you wanna do it again. How fast do you answer those four questions? Pretty fast. Pretty freaking fast. Yep, you don't need to talk yourself into something or out of something. And if you're having those conversations, you probably shouldn't do it. Find something else to do. This is so awesome. Thank you so much. So I like to end every interview with a random non-fitness question. Okay. Uh, I like it. Oh, she didn't know about this. <laughs> so I literally just have a list. I'm going to pick one. Okay. Out. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. If it's not PG, maybe, but it, what is your favorite word? Sleep. Sleep. I really, I'm a sleep poor. Oh, yes. Yeah. I always have been, and I think I've just, in my later years, have really, like, embraced my love for sleep. <laughs> I just really like it. Don't mess with it. Like, I'm not a mean person, like, ever. I'm just, I don't really have it in me. Uh, <laughs> But if you wake me up when it's not time to be woken up, I'm not going to be very nice. <laughs> this is if, so awesome. If I didn't get enough sleep, I'm not going to be very nice. I'm going to be kind of grouchy, so and I'll probably schedule a nap in. I'm a big proponent of naps, by the way. 
I am all about that. I'm all about the nap. So your favorite word is sleep because of all the nostalgia that comes with it. I mean, it's, I mean, you just feel so good when you're sleeping. When you get good sleep and you wake up and you're kind of like, mm. yeah. Howard Sternum, do you like sleep? <laughs> he always kind of looks like he's a little sleepy. He, he like, cool issues. He, he drove across the country twice. It's a lot. He did good. <laughs> That's a lot. I'm trying to get him in. <laughs> That's good. I like it. <laughs> okay, girly. Thank you so much for your time and contributing to the everyday athlete and the death of death community. They, I know they appreciate it. I appreciate it. I um, always follow you and admire everything you're putting out there. You're such an inspiration to so many. So I have, um, I, I slash if they have questions or want to see what's up to or what you're doing. How do we contact? You. like what's the best way to like look you up okay so i mean obviously i have my social media platforms uh both instagram twitter all a v navarro so okay alex victoria's middle name v navarro those are all of my handles uh you can go to fitlivingfoodies.com that's the main website where you can read a little bit about like the coaching services I offer. I also have a substantial food blog and some cookbooks because I love to eat, which probably eating would be my second favorite word. Um, but sleep is still the priority. But food is like right up there. And uh, it's full of tools, uh, more in the kitchen side of things than uh, with exercise because they, they obviously go together. And then if you wanted to check out the podcast, which is female focused, but I do find that a lot of uh, the, the male populations finds it interesting, especially if they have a significant other who's a woman uh, <laughs> or they're a male trainer and they train women, very insightful information. So that is on iTunes under body I O F M and you look for her body. Um, you can also go to body IO.com and find out more information about sort of the, the eating uh approach that I've talked about a little bit. I'm oh, a little all over the place. I love it. That gives us <laughs> lots of options to access this. So, so thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. That was all fun. Right, we'll talk Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.